Hello everyone, my name is Swapnil Lotke and I am a PWE certified under curator. I have scored 6 rank in the last year's exam and I am here to share you some of my experience regarding preparation of it. All of you are aware of it that the exam consists of 4 books. While preparing for the exam, I had 3 questions in mind. What to prepare, how to prepare and when to prepare. Almost all of the people who give this exam are working professionals. A major task in camp is taking out some time for preparing the exam. When I used to prepare, I used to take out some time after my working hours. Even if you study for like 4 hours a day, that would be enough for cracking the exam. But you have to start early. During weekdays, I would normally study in the evening, 2 hours and in the night, 2 hours. During weekends, I would normally study for 6 hours, 2 hours in the morning, 2 hours in the evening, and 2 hours in the night. The test will have to be done as per your time schedule. This exam sometimes have unpredictable questions, so I had to study all of the subjects and all the chapters so you have to start early before the exam I started studying for this exam since the month of May till the end of the September I kept the last 15 days for just solving the previous year's question papers with this time schedule I was able to complete all the chapters in 4 months during this preparation time, you might think of skipping some chapters. I highly recommend you not to skip any of the chapters because even if you skip in one chapter, you tend to lose some marks. This was the answer to my first question, when to study. Coming back to the next question, what to study. As I have mentioned before, cannot leave any of the chapters. The first book which is the general aspect of energy management and energy audit, is the most easiest book. But this book is the most important one also. With this book you get familiarized with all the units of energy. If you read this book thoroughly then all the upcoming books second, third and fourth comes easy for you. There are some important chapters like energy and mass balance and like financial math analysis. These things definitely come in this fourth book. I started studying with this first book itself because that is the way you should start preparing. First you take book one, then you go to book two, then book three. Lastly, book four. Book four comprises all of the first three books, problems and numericals. So you have to be thorough with the first three books. There are some repetitive questions coming from different chapters. So solving previous question paper is a must. And what you want to study you can definitely check from the question papers. It is not always that you should study all of, the, all of the things in every chapter. You can skip some points if you want to, but I highly recommend not to. Book 1 consists mostly of theoretical questions, but and there are some numerical questions which also you need to solve. My strongest point was solving numerical, so I would always prefer numerical because if you all numerical perfectly, you get full marks. While writing theoretical answers, I almost used my ways of writing, not the book ways. 
you just have to understand the concept and based on your experience you can write anything but relevant relevant to that the second book is the energy efficiency in thermal utilities the people who give this exam generally are from chemical engineering mechanical engineering electrical engineering background for mechanical and chemical engineering this book seems quite easy but for electrical people you have to work a lot hard for the electrical engineering background people i would recommend them to study a little bit of physics from 11th and 12th illusion so that you can grasp what is the second book there are some problems which need basic understanding Along with fusion combustion, if you also study heat and transfer, mass transfer from the same 11-12 standard physics, you will be to get with the boilers and furnaces chapter. Not only the electrical engineering, but also both mechanical and chemical engineering people find this question but tough. The main reason for this is that Literally have confused with a lot of different formulas for the same thing. They have put up in shortcut formulas for us to solve quick problems. But I don't recommend them. I would always go with the conventional formulas. The conventional formulas that we studied in our Bachelor of Engineering degree are the only ones which are used the only difference between these formulas and the conventional ones is that the PW have put up some derived formulas which are not much necessary to remember if you remember your bachelor of engineering formulas then that is also fine you can use those formulas too you will definitely get the same answer for example, if you look at the boiler chapter and you see, the, you see that you have to find out the boiler efficiency using indirect method. In that method, you have to find out the loss due to dry flow gas. For calculating the mass of dry flow gas, you have to use different formulas. If you have the basic knowledge of molecule of weight, then you will definitely able to solve this question so that's the reason why I told, told you that you should study 11th and 12th physics as per my experience 70% of the paper consists of numericals 30% consists of theoretical questions if you remember some diagrams you can easily write according to them and the questions of theoretical type are not much difficult as compared to the numericals. The next book is energy efficiency in electrical utilities. They seems like electrical utilities but it hardly contains any electrical problems. Some electrical equipment like transfers, motors, losses related to electrical energy come under this but the majority of questions are related to mechanical terms like refrigeration cycle, pumps, flow wars, etc. This book also contains the same thing as second paper. You don't have to rely on their formulas, you just have to focus on your formulas. In this book also, you can find that there are many formulas for the same answer. For example, in Bachelor of Engineering, I learned that the basic formula for calculating the pump power is using rho g q h. Also, this same formula is applicable for blowers and fans because of the same mode of operation that is centrifugal. 
there is only a slight difference between because of the use of different words there is a slight variation in the formula but if you remember the basic one and remember the difference in them that is enough for you so first three books are not unlike our engineering exam you just have to know what to study most of the questions are repeated from the previous question papers but the different values coming to the fourth book even though it is an open book exam no one most of the people are unable to crack this book. this paper of book 4 can only be solved with logic but when i started reading all of the chapters i find that this book is also it is a revision of what you studied in all your three subjects there are some new important chapters which you will see in this book like thermal power plants textile plants and then iron and steel plants any of the questions you won't understand if you don't know what the process is in that industry For example, you must know what comes after a steam turbine in a thermal power plant. Only then you will be able to find out the power generated. Sometimes some values are given just to confuse you, but they are irrelevant to the question. You just have to be pretty much sure, and that surety comes when you know. what the process is to solve the question paper of the book number 4 i have already told that you need some logic to gain additional logic you need to study logical reasoning so basically solving for the question paper you need to have in depth knowledge of different process industry and some logic that's it A little help also comes from your field of experience. If you don't have the field of experience, then you need to study more in detail. Not only related to the book, you have to study some articles, some websites, some books other than the BWD book. And last one thing we have to do is revision. For me, revision was very important. My planning and my schedule included revision on the seventh day of the week. I will solve the questions coming on the last pages of every chapter. You don't have to skip these ones because some of them are repeated in the question paper. You must have got a pretty big idea about how did I study. can always try your own method but i highly recommend that you read all of the material available with you not only the pdf book try to solve as much as numerical as possible and with the same formulas that you have been using since your bachelor's degree or 11th or 12th so for me There were four things to remember. First, time. You have to take out time to study. Second is revision. Without revision, you cannot remember anything that you learn, even if it is a specific formula. Third is the conventional formulas. And lastly, logical reasoning. Daily thirty minutes of logical reasoning gave me the ability to solve these questions. One thing you also need to remember are the units that we doubly have used in this one. You need to remember the conversions of different units. There, for example, I have read cooling capacity in kilowatts. 
I should know how to convert this kilowatt cooling capacity into kilocalories per hour as well as in ton of refrigeration. For example, there's a value given in your question which you don't know because you didn't have to understand the question. But if you look at its unit, you will be able to understand the question because of the unit of the single value. So you should remember what are the units of every quantity. So this is it that these four things have helped me practically exam. I hope I have helped you a little bit with your preparations.